Welcome back to the workshop. And again, this week I'm joined by Steve Baker, sharpening guru and design engineer for us at WorkSharp. And this week we're talking about edge angles. What is edge angle? Well, I'll show you a chart and hopefully that helps clear some things up. But this is a cross section of your knife edge. So if, uh, if you're looking at a knife, you know, like this. This is the tip of your knife, the cutting edge. This is the, the secondary grind or, uh, you know, the part of your knife right before it gets sharp, the primary grind. Yep. Steve knows way more about this than I do. <laughs> the transition point where the actual sharp edge begins to be cut in is called the shoulder. And the angle at which that edge is cut in to reach the tip or that apex is the angle that we're talking about. So on this one, I have it marked out at 20 degrees. That's 20 degrees per side. If you were gonna measure that, some people measure it inclusive and that's referring to the total of the two or that's this angle of the actual edge and that would be 40 degrees. That's what edge angle is and that's what we're talking about. Or is there one perfect angle to rule them all? Well, it really depends on what you're doing. Uh, I would say that kitchen knives usually have a range of 15 to 18 degrees. Pocket knives are gonna have a range from 17 to 25 degrees. And any sort of hardworking outdoor bushcraft camp knife uh, is probably gonna have an edge angle, you know, 25 to 35 degrees. Why is that, Steve? Um. Your angle ranges are really there. Really what it comes down to is a preference of what you want um, and the type of knife steel you have, the job you're gonna be doing. But when we think about those three ranges that you put out, your kitchen knife is, you're, you're in the kitchen, you're slicing vegetables, you're cutting meat, this type of thing. You want something very thin that's gonna slice through nice and easy. Um, a really, you know, a, a more obtuse angle up and around a 30. It's wider, it's not gonna cut as clean. Um, so, and your kitchen knife. More, more like an ax, you know, kind of a splitting method, not a, not a clean slice. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So you want something that's gonna give you nice clean cuts. Kitchen knives are built for that so they can withstand um, the thinner angles. Mm -hmm. Your pocket knives, you know, you're out doing stuff. You're hunting, you're fishing, you're working somewhere, whether it's on a ranch or at your own house or whatever. It takes a little bit more abuse. I know mine do. So I like to keep mine a little bit more obtuse, somewhere around the 20 to 25 degree range because it leaves more meat or more material at the back at the bevel so it's a little thicker mm -hmm. it's stronger mm -hmm. and then you get into the bushcrafting knives those things can really take some abuse um, i've got a couple that i use for using you know, camping and yard work where i'm chopping limbs i wouldn't go out and chop limbs with a like kitchen a knife, knife or something yeah. with a really thin edge because it's just going to bend and it's going to mm -hmm. break off so i want something i sharpen all mine at right about 30 degrees and it just makes them really durable yeah yeah so sometimes yeah one of the things that comes comes into play actually with a lot of knives, um, especially as knife steel technology continues to progress, is that these premium steels are allowing uh, hardworking knives to be sharpened at slightly finer angles. Uh, you know, maybe a pocket knife down at, you know, kind of what I said, 17 degrees or something like that is still going to provide you some decent edge retention uh, because it is a, a really premium steel that's designed to, you know, not break down at the tip. Definitely, yeah. a lot of the newer steels coming out, you can get a much thinner angle and have amazing edge retention on them. Um, and there's other steels that are built for toughness. Um, so you can get that thinner angle and they can take a little bit more abuse. So yeah, the, as, as the steel technology progresses, it changes the game a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's show this real quick. I kind of forgot we had this out. Um, but this is, so this is what we're talking about, a 17 degree angle. And I, I guessed at these. Um, but a 17 degree angle may look something where the, that cutting edge is a little bit taller. Uh, it's thinned out. You can see it's more, uh, you could say it's more pointy. Uh, whereas something like a 25 degree angle uh, would be a little bit more ob obtuse, obviously. But, uh, you know, it's thicker behind there. It's not quite as slicey. Um, and one thing you can tell from here is if these are, he's got them drawn up. These are the same thickness of knife. So what you can expect is in a 25 degree, you know, you're gonna have a fairly short um, bevel here. But when you go to a 17 degree, you know, you're taking this transition point and you're moving it up. So you're gonna end up with a, um, ah, pardon me. You're gonna end up basically taking 
we go from that 25 down to a 17, you're gonna remove all this material here, lengthens that bevel out as Josh has shown there, and it is gonna take you more time, more work mm -hmm. to get there. Just to sharpen it, yeah. Yeah, it's a good point. Well, so if I wanna know what angle my knife is sharpened to, because you know, these are a lot of knives in the factory are sharpened by hand or, um, you know, and it can vary. And even, even the guys who are really good at it in the factories are, are still, there's going to be some variability. They're not using jigs often. So if I want to know what my knife is sharpened to, there's a few ways to check. You were showing me this cool tool the other day. We called it a goineometer. Would you mind showing us a little bit about the, how that works and what sure. it does? Um, basically it has a, a couple of pieces of plexiglass in here with a V in in there and you place your knife in the V and then this is a laser so when I press the button it's gonna shine a light and it's gonna hit the cutting edge of my knife it's gonna split that beam and inside here there's graduations um, similar to a protractor and it's going to where the where it splits the beam it's gonna shine on the numbers on in, in, inside of it and it's gonna tell me what angle I'm at so I place my knife in I shoot that laser at it and I can see about where my knife is. It's not always perfectly clear, um, depending on the condition of your knife, whether it's a convex or whether it's a flat grind, the, um, the results are, could be a little different looking. I wouldn't expect most people have something like that at home. Uh, if you want to, again, the tool is called a goineometer. They can range from you know, 50 to 100 bucks probably for, for something similar to this one. There's a couple out there that get kind of crazy. But there's a cool trick that we want to show you. Again, we use, we got to use a Sharpie in like every episode. Um, get a sponsorship. And Sharp from Sharpie. So we're going to, we're going to show a little trick here. Steve's wondering what angle he's got on his, he's got a Benchmade bug out there. Going to give it a little sharpen and he's wondering what exactly the edge angle is. So we call this the Sharpie trick. Um, Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take our Sharpie and I'm going to cover the bevel with it. Just the, the little short sharpened bevel on there, as Josh had stated earlier. We're going to run that all the way up it, cover that entire bevel. I'm going to flip it over because I want to make sure I measure both sides. So we cover that with the Sharpie. And you can do the same trick with a a regular bench stone, um, a vertical system similar to this. You can use it on a powered system, any of these. And what we're looking for is, I'm gonna make a couple strokes on here, and then I'm gonna look at how where the Sharpie comes off of the cutting edge. If I only see the Sharpie being removed at the very tip or at the very um, apex of the cutting edge, I know my angle is too obtuse, it's too flat. Um, if I only touch the heel, then I know I'm too far in. My, my angle is too acute. So then I'll make an adjustment and I'll go a little bit wider or a little bit flatter. And then I'll make another stroke until I'm touching the entire bevel. So I have this, this unit here set at 15 degrees right now. So I'm going to come in. A couple quick adjustments here. So I'm just going to come in. Take a couple light strokes on each side. And you want to do this with a with a fine abrasive because we're not actually wanting to sharpen yet. We're just trying to see where we're at. So now if I look at this, you can see now I've removed material from the heel, but I didn't touch the cutting edge of the rest of the, of the bevel. So I'm going to make an adjustment. We're going to go from 15 degree. Now we're going to try it at 17 degree. We chose this, this sharpener today because it has a couple of different options for, uh, for the angles. If you don't have a system that offers different angle selections, uh, maybe you've got something like a, a traditional diamond stone or bench stone, uh, the most important thing is going to be consistency. So find something that gives you an angle rest or if you've got great muscle memory and you, and you know you can make a consistent stroke. Um, you can do the same thing without a, a guided system or a measured guided system and get a good feel for where your where your knife's at. Um, you know, make adjustments as you go. I grabbed a couple of things. You can use uh, what are these called? Little binder clips. 
and uh, you can use that as a, as a reference. This one looks a little steep, but essentially it's going to give you a consistent reference. You can, I've seen guys who will use the chop saw to get a little wedge of wood yep. or uh, stack some quarters or something yeah. just so that you have a consistent reference and you can make a good, uh, build, build good muscle memory. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you build up a little stack of coins or something, just something to rest that the spine of your knife on, and then you can pull a coin out and it'll drop it down or add and it'll stand it up. Just something to help you learn that muscle memory. So I adjusted that. I'm still just touching the heel. So we're going to move this up to 20 degrees, and we're just going to keep doing this until I contact the entire cutting surface. All right, and there, you can see now at 20 degrees, I've taken all the Sharpie off of there, so that tells me my cutting edge is right at 20 degrees. So now I know exactly where to sharpen it at. So is there, is there one angle to rule them all, or...? No. No, <laughs> no, it's not that simple. <laughs> it is not that simple. It goes back to what we were saying earlier. Um, the type of knife, the material, the, the actual steel of the knife, the intended purpose of it, um, and your own personal preference. There's a lot of different ways to, to do this, and everybody's a little different. You find the one that works for you, that gives you the results for the job you're trying to do with a specific tool that you're working with, and that is the angle you should be using. Well, that's what we've got for you today about edge angles. If you guys have more questions, leave comments down below. We answer those and, uh, and we'll get back to you. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe to the channel. That way you will see us again next week. Thanks for tuning in this week. If you wanna check out some of our previous videos, click the link here, or if you wanna subscribe, click down here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.